Now today I thought I'd carry on showing you the project that I've been working on which we've now submitted for planning and I'm really excited to say it seems to be progressing well through the planning system. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through some of the final output drawings. Now these are ones that you've seen from the earlier tutorial uh, but where it starts to get a bit more exciting is things like the rendered site plan. So I just want to talk about how I've created some of these drawings and some of the presentation tips along the way. Now you'll notice that if I click onto the viewport, basically we can click onto the layers and see what layers this contains. And essentially it contains a site layer, which is giving me the 3D terrain, it contains a trees layer, which obviously given give me the trees surrounding the site, but it also contains um, a layer called option to building reference some site boundaries and some heliodons which do the lighting. So basically let me break that down for you and make you understand sort of why this is a good technique uh, in order to understand how to create these viewports. Okay so what I'm going to do is double click onto my viewport and this is one of the nice ways that I can actually navigate back to the chosen design layer within the file. Now it will give me the option to select any of the design layers that I want to. Um, let's go through to the site layer and we'll click OK and as you can see I'm now back in the design layer but with it basically set to the settings that I was in the viewport. So let's kind of render this up. Um, you can see at the moment I've got the site and the building surrounding with these lovely uh, BB trees. These are actually called random owl trees now. But if I strip that back a bit for you just to show you what's going on, let's turn the trees off for example. Um, and then here's the site boundaries as well. Now what I really wanted to show you is in this particular project I actually did two options for the client. So here is the option two which was actually the final option the client went for like a, a single story bungalow but with a bit of double height space which was a really nice option. But if I turn this one off um, and go to building reference one you can actually see the original option I proposed which was basically um, a two story option. Um, there's also a little bit of a kind of plane in there. But basically this was a nice little option to explain to the client the sort of different design options and let's put those trees back on um, for the site. So optioneering is an excellent way to uh, basically use Vectorworks to kind of really rapidly get over um, you know different debates about which option to go for. Now if you do want to do this what I would recommend is you have this as a design layer viewport. Okay, so for example, let me show you the two story option. So if I actually double click on it, that in itself is a viewport and basically will link to the contained layers that contain the model. So when I click OK, you'll notice that it will kind of actually link back to the model. But the beautiful thing is this model is modeled in origin space around the origin itself. So what I mean by that is I didn't have to rotate it to the awkward angle place it on the site where it needed to go. It was all very straightforward and easy to model in the way that I wanted. And then all I do is I move that reference layer onto the site and basically rotate it around where I needed it. So it's a very, very good little technique. Um, if you are going to rotate, by the way, I'd recommend you use this mode so that we can kind of spin around the middle nice and accurately. And it just gives you a really nice impression of how the floor plan works to look at it in 3D like this. So rather than top plan, if you look at it in the three dimensional view, uh, this can look really, really cool. And by the way, if you turn on the heliodons, um, at the moment I'm going to get a lot of different lights. But let's go down to my classes and let's type in the word HEL for heliodon. And let's just disable those heliodons and maybe just put one of them on. So you get these nice shadows coming across the drawing. So these are kind of uh, drawings that I really do quite like to create. So if I would like to capture that onto my sheet, I can just go to create viewport and let's go for a new drawing here. Let's go for a new sheet. Let's call this 23 rendered plan. So very easy to do. Now don't forget if you are going to render the drawing, you will want to increase the DPI to two or 300 dots per inch, depending on your paper size. Um, basically let's click OK. There is a couple of other settings here. Um, this is to do with planar and 2D components. So if you don't want the dimensions and the text shown, you can turn these off because they're planar. But let's go ahead and click OK and then basically click update. So that will update my plan onto the sheet and you can see it's a really nice little drawing that I can use to create the design. 
Okay, great. So let's go back to our render type plan where we were discussing the drawing and you can now see how that works on its site. Let's have a look at the next set of actual floor plans. So here I've got a normal floor plan at 1 to 100 scale and a roof plan, which is actually a rendered hidden line plan of the roof. And what I wanted to show you here was the different level of detail that we can easily put into our Vectorworks drawings as well using the wall tools. So at the moment, I've got the walls showing quite a lot of detail um, just to kind of anticipate the build up and construction of these walls. Now, if I do want to, a very simple way to uh, turn the detail off is just go to low level of detail and you'll notice that the walls just immediately black out um, just to kind of like show very little detail. Now, one thing to be aware of is the windows and the doors will also be simplified. So if you don't want those to be simplified in the way that I'm not keen on, what I tend to do is go to my high settings, okay, but then go to classes and basically take all of the classes that interact uh, with the walls and show those components. And basically I just black those out. So that's going to be some of them, I think. Let's just take these other ones. I think there's a bunch of wall classes down here. I'm not quite sure, but let's just take them all and basically click solid. And let's go ahead and choose a black as well. So hopefully, if I click OK, you can see I did pretty well. Actually, I got them all blacked out. So basically, I've overridden the class graphics in the viewport. And that gives me the benefit of the high level of detail for the windows and the doors, but still the nice sort of simplistic method as well. Now, if you do want to revert that, that's very easy. Simply click all of the classes there and just click revert. And that will basically send them back to the graphics they were before. Excellent. Okay, so let's move on. Let's take a look at the elevational drawings. Now, these are very simple elevations and they are simply rendered using the shaded view. And you can see the kind of settings that I'm using, textures, colors, anti-aging, shadows, and just drawing the edges as well. Just gives that nice defined sort of edge look that I like. I'm not really worrying about the environmental reflections in 2023 at this stage, um, but that's something we can talk about a bit later. But all I've really done here to make this work is you'll see that I've got lighting which applies to all the viewports. Okay, so let me just discuss how that works. If I go into my classes, type in the word Heliodon, let's filter, you'll notice that I've actually got four Heliodons which are basically representative of the real sun. And each one of these Heliodons will cast shadows into the design and give me nice shadows on the model. So of course the front Heliodon is applied to the front viewport. If I click onto the back one, you'll notice that the same thing applies, albeit I've just turned the front Heliodon and the back one off. And the reason for that is pretty obvious. If I click update with the front Heliodon on instead of the back one, you'll see that A, you don't get shadows and also it looks really dark. So in order to kind of sort that out, very straightforwardly, I just duplicate the Heliodon and put four Heliodons in different classes so that I've got an appropriate one for each viewport. And this is like a little Heliodon rig that I drop into my design. So if I double click back to the design layer and go and look at the Heliodons and let's go to top plan. Here you can see the single Heliodon. If I go and turn the others on as well, you'll see all four of them there. But as I say, all I do is I use my visibility tool to turn off the ones that I don't want to see in that particular viewport. And then when I look at that with uh, some rendering on, you'll see we get these nice sort of shadows and things coming into the model. So a great little tip for uh, the viewports for elevations. And the only other thing that I've done is double click. If I go into annotations, you'll see that I've added, let's select everything and do command X, cut. You can see that I've added a base I've added a nice little blue sky, which I've sent behind the viewport, and that's just using the gradient tool. I've also added um, some of the fantastic elevational benchmarks. What I really like about these benchmarks um, is they basically auto benchmark. As you can see, if I was to kind of add a few more into the design, they will also automatically update with the different sort of data and so on as well. Now, that's really easy to set up. And that's something that you can get from the Dims and Notes palette. So just go down to the uh, Elevation Benchmark tool. And what I recommend is you set that on reference to be uh, the Y distance, just in a 2D viewport like this. So that's a really neat little trick. Excellent. Okay. One other thing that I just want to briefly mention is uh, the way that I do the notes. So for this, I use the Callout tool. Now, this is a fantastic tool. 
basically the call out tool enables you to do uh, notes and text so for example if I click and let's add a new note in here with a little shoulder I click OK now of course I can type in the note um, and as I do it I notice a spelling mistake so I can right click and spell check that's a really good little tip on the Mac particularly let's do that so there we can see the note and if you do want the error head you just pop that onto the drawing now what you're going to notice is this note uh, isn't on the drawing as yet or ra rather not in the legend so in order to place it in there I just simply go place as keynote and you'll notice that note 12 has now been added so that's really really cool in fact let's delete it you'll now notice that it says not applicable okay and this is neat in order to uh, tidy this up I can click remove gaps and basically that will renumber or at least remove any gaps that were available now there's a lot more you can do to the notes tool I'm just scratching the surface but uh, if you want to know more than that um, give me a shout and we'll do some training love to help on the training side okay so the next drawing we're going to talk about is the sections and I've got two lots of sections some site sections as you can see these look great I think uh, really kind of set in the building in the context and I really like the way that you can kind of like use the shadows and everything to hopefully uh, represent that building accurately in its context there so we do lots of sections I particularly like this little one here just showing it in relation to the building next door with the site model I've also got um, some isometric views now you can see that with these um, let's just move that one up a bit so you can kind of see and that one down a bit these basically simply show the front or back of the building and these are simply right isometric or front isometric but what I have done is just vary the lighting accordingly now if I do want to I can also generate some internal sections so let's have a look at how we do this and I'll focus on sections for a moment more is simply navigate back to my design layer and let's go to the right one let's go to this one and let's turn the roof on as well so we've got a couple of design layers here and you can see we've got the heliodon in the model that's fine so let's go ahead and do it first of all with the wonderful clip cube now let's click the clip cube and what you're going to find is you'll get the bounding box popping up um, so it's really nice if you do want to, you can create sort of section floor plans looking through the model as well uh, but I'm going to go for one uh, kind of sliding through the model I think we'll go sort of horizontally this direction to begin with now if I'm happy I can basically a right click and go to create section viewport so let's go ahead and create a brand new sheet let's call this uh, 24 section new and basically let's click OK and again let's increase the DPI of the sheet so when I first create the section you'll notice um, okay there's some sketch on that I wasn't expecting that that's fine that's kind of cool let me show you how that's achieved let's blow it up a bit so basically I've got a little kind of uh, section with no detail if I go into the settings it's in hidden line and there we go you can see the sketch setting in there which actually looks really nice um, let's vary that sketch setting and see how that looks yeah that looks cool let's turn it off as well just to get a nice crisp section okay so there's my first section and let's basically move down a copy and I'm going to go down now to advanced properties and in here I can basically turn on all of the detail that was actually embedded in my walls and slabs so now when I click update you'll notice I get a lot more detail coming into the model and a final little touch that I really love um, is the ability to not only do rendered section let's click update and render those up uh, you just get a bit more going on with the rendering um, you kind of get a bit more kind of appearance of depth and so on as well and finally I can really increase the amount of depth and understandability by going to perspective so let's give it a little bit of perspective um, let's see what happens when we go to about five we'll click OK hopefully that will kind of look pretty cool and you'll see the perspective sections are yeah great really nice little understandable drawings for the client okay so this is how you do sections so we'll go back to our sheets and you'll see that I already uh, created a couple of other perspective sections with a bit of rendering and lighting as well I've also got the key plan here but I will show you that in the future um, and again let me know if you need any training on how to create that coordinated key plan okay so the final few drawings in this particular project are really the site drawings just to show uh, how the building looks from a different location and I've got a perspective camera here so if I do double click I can actually navigate back into the viewport 
And let's go back to the design layer. And what's really nice about that is I'm now back in the design layer and I could also set up a couple of save views. So let's go for this. Let's call this save view. Uh, let's call this view new one. And I'm going to go forward with my walking through tool. Let's move through uh, using the walk through tool, which is actually really nice. So I can kind of just walk through the design, get a really good impression. Let's just sort of walk through here and kind of like look at the design in a bit more detail. That's a nice little spot. And let's go for uh, save view. Let's call this uh, view new two. And basically now you'll notice that I can do a quick little animation between them just by jumping between those views. Okay, now the speed of the transition can also be adapted. So in order to do that, I'm just going to pop open my resources browser. Yeah, here we go. I've got my view transition scripts. And this is something that I've talked about before in other videos. So if I slow that down, if I double click the 10 second preview, now when I go to my what's new to view, you should see I get a really nice smooth animation that plays over that 10 seconds. There's a really nice aspect to Vectorworks that I think is uh, working really, really well, the transition scripts. So do remember though to pop back in and once you've done that, you probably want to go back to no transition or the default speed, just so that when you kind of zoom out and so on, uh, it doesn't also do the transition when you're navigating as well. Excellent. So I really hope you've enjoyed uh, finding out more about the perspective views. Now the final sheets I just want to talk about are these exploded views. And these are great because they show the internal and external relationship of architectural space, but also quite a bit about the construction and how you've layered up your model. And again, it's something I'll talk about in another video later. Finally, you can see when I was doing some earlier options for the client, I did want to explore a few different material options. And this is a really nice little aspect of Eptoworks that I did using the class overrides. And you can see basically I've just overridden a couple of the classes in order that I can change the textures on those as well. So that's a bit like when we did the uh, wall overrides and chose the level of detail. Okay, so the final thing I just wanted to focus on is um, something not really applicable for this project at the moment, but I just want to show you the new graphic legends and how wonderful these are. You can see I've basically uh, kind of scheduled off all of the doors for the entire project in a single click. And I can do the same with windows as well. There's the windows just with hidden line representation. So I will be running through the graphic legends in future videos. So if you want to find out more about that, please subscribe to the channel or reach out to me for some training. I look forward to seeing you in the next video and we'll focus more on how we created this kind of more technical information. So thanks for watching everybody. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.